Hey Transit, it's Kevin here, and I am here with my two boys, Caden and Quinn. We've got Quinn here. He is nine years old, going into fourth grade. And then my oldest son, Caden, is 11, and he is going into sixth grade, which means he will be joining us in Transit in just a couple short months, and we are so excited about that. And one of the things that I have missed most about being in Transit is the hosting at the beginning, the fun games that we would play, which, Caden, uh, if you didn't know, in Transit, those fun games usually end up turning a little bit messy and yucky. So we decided we wanted to kick off this new series that we're in this week uh, with a fun game called Egg Roulette. Now, some of you may have remember us doing this game in the past. What it's going to be is we have got six eggs that thankfully my wife has helped us with. She has hard-boiled three of them and left three of them completely raw. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to get a chance to go first and try to egg my boys. And I am going to take the egg and pick one at random and smash it on their head. And we will find out if it's hard-boiled or if it's raw. And you will see the difference for sure. Uh, and so we're going to go ahead and get that started now. And let's see here. I'm going to pick my first egg for these guys. Uh, all right. I'm picking this one here. See the egg right here. And I am going to go ahead and smash. You know what? Caden, I think you need to wait and go second. Quinn, come on up here. We're going to have you go first. No. Have a seat. No. That's right. No. It's totally random. No. Come on, have a seat. We're going to do this. First egg right here on Caden. Are you ready, Caden? Will you give me a quick countdown here? Mm -hmm. Okay, go. Three, two, one. Ah. Oh! Hard-boiled egg. Look at that. No yolk, no runny. You're nice and clean. Okay. All right, Caden. That means you're up. I'm going to pick one more. All right. Here we go. I pick one more. Let's see here. I'm going to go with this one. All right. We got a brand new egg here for Caden. Quinn, I know you're going to want to do the countdown for this one, right? Can I do it? You can do it. Countdown from three. Four. Oh, no. You want to smash it on his head? Oh, this <laughs> looks like some brother fighting we might be starting here. All right. Here we go. In three, two, one. Oh, oh no! Uh, it's just another uh, hard boiled. Oh. Uh, <laughs> you guys know that means my chances are not looking good. All right, I'm going to have a seat. You guys go ahead, pick out two more eggs. Please let at least one of them be hard boiled. Don't do anything with them just yet. Go ahead. <laughs> you can stand behind me, but no cracking them until I say, okay? Come on, Caden, over here on this what, side. What about your hat? <clears throat> oh, yeah. I better remove my hat. Uh, I probably should have worn a poncho, but I didn't. Hey, but we are so excited for this next series coming up. We're calling it In This Together, whether we like it or not, because the truth is we have all been in this together with our families over the past couple months, and we've got a little bit more time this summer to spend with them, and we're going to learn about how we can get along, how we can work out our differences, uh, and just really enjoy our time together with our family instead of fighting and bickering or, or those type of issues. So we're excited about this series. We hope you stay tuned. And here we go. I'm going to let my boys egg me, and we'll see what happens. And hopefully we'll see you back next week, too. All right, ready, boys? Go ahead. Three, two, one. Oh, harder. Oh! Get out! Oh! oh! All right. Have a great week, everybody, and check out the video right now. What's up Transit? My name is Jean. I'm so glad that you are here with us today. Over the past couple of months, maybe it's been like three months now, you've been staying at home, socially distancing, not only keeping yourself safe, but also keeping the people around you safe as well, which is great. But I don't know what you've been doing with your time, but I know for me and the time that I have, I've just been eating my way through quarantine. Right, like I've been um, baking a lot more at home, like cookies and, and cupcakes and brownies and Rice Krispie treats. And I don't know if you can consider making Rice Krispie treats baking. I've also been like cooking at home a lot more, which has been fun because I'm not a cook at all. I'm a terrible cook. Um, you probably don't want me to cook, but that's been an adventure during um, this quarantine time. Um, what else have I been doing? Oh, 
I've been spending a lot of time in my pantry and in my refrigerator, and I think those are the biggest obstacles in my life right now, are the doors to my pantry and my refrigerator, because they're just in the way of getting to all the really delicious food that are, that are in there. Uh, but something else that I've been doing with my time, and you have probably have been doing a lot of this with your time too, is spending it with these guys. Now, you're probably thinking, wait, like, those are not the people that I've been spending my time with. And that's right, because these are the people that I've been spending time with. You've been spending time with the people at your house. But I think you get what I'm trying to say here, is that we've been spending a lot of time together with our families. And so today, we're starting a brand new series called In This Together. And over the next couple of weeks, we are going to be navigating through the different road bumps, bumps in the road when it comes to dealing with our families because whether you like it or not you are in this together with your family and we want to help you be better together as a family and get through this together with your family and so you've probably seen picture a family picture similar to this one you know where people are sitting outside they look happy they're wearing better clothes than what they normally would wear on a regular day uh, you probably have a family picture hanging up in your house somewhere or in a photo book somewhere in your house. You, we see examples of families like everywhere. You see them on social media. Your friends post about their families on their Instagram. Celebrities and professional athletes, they post pictures about their families. Lately, I've been seeing a lot of families doing TikTok videos together, which seems really awesome. I wish my family could do that, but my husband is a terrible dancer, so actually I'm doing the world a huge favor by not posting those videos on my TikTok. Uh, but we watch TV shows about families, from comedies all the way to reality TV shows, and you get glimpses of what other real families are like whenever you go over to your friend's house or out in public. And sometimes when we see families and examples of other people's families, we can't help but compare our families to their families. Right? Like you look at somebody's family and you're thinking, man, they look like they just have so much fun together. Or man, they look like they just, just get along and, and spend so much time together. Or you look at another family and think, they've got a lot more stuff, a lot more better stuff compared to my family. And so what will start to happen is we kind of pick and choose the things we like in each one of these families and we mesh them together to come up with this image of the perfect family. But then you start to wonder, and you start to have questions in your mind like, well, why is their family like that and mine isn't? Why is their family so much different compared to my family? And I know for me, growing up, one thing that made my family just a little bit different from everyone else's is that me and my younger sister, we actually went by the same name growing up. I know, really strange, but let me explain. You see, I'm Korean, and in my culture, we have this traditional naming system, right? So my Korean name is Jean Sun, and my younger sister's name is Jean Young, and not all families go through this traditional naming system, but my parents decided that they did. And so my parents would call me by my Korean name and my sister by their Korean, by their Korean name, but outside of my house, our friends just called us Jean. The problem was that whenever any of our friends called our house, they'd be like, oh, can I talk to Jean? And we would always have to ask, which Jean are you talking about? Which is a really strange question to ask, because anytime we would ask that question, the person on the other end would just get really confused, hang up, and then just like never call back again. And then at school, they would be like, why, why, is, your, why is your family kind of different in that way that they've named you and your sister the same exact thing. And I'd have to go through this big explanation as to why, you know, about my culture and all of that stuff. And it just made me feel like my family was different from everyone else's. And maybe for you, the thing that makes your family different or the things that, thing that you feel like makes your family so much different compared to everyone else's maybe isn't a silly story like mine. Maybe for you, the thing that you feel like makes your family different is that you feel like your family is the only one that has siblings that just won't leave you alone. Or you feel like you've, you're the only one, only family that has these different traditions that nobody else does. Or maybe for you, you feel like your family is the only family that doesn't have the opportunity to spend a lot of quality time together. Or maybe for you, you feel like your family is the only family whose parents aren't together. And so compared to these images of the families that we see and, and the perfect image that we have of a, what a family should be in our minds, 
we always just feel like our family is just so much dif different from everyone else's and that our family isn't perfect at all. But the thing is, you're probably not the only person to ever think that, to think or feel that your family is different or that your family isn't perfect at all. In fact, there have been imperfect families since the beginning of time. There are even imperfect families recorded in our very own Bibles, right? For example, off the top of my head, I, I can think of Cain and Abel. They're brothers, but Cain kills his brother Abel, and then Cain has to run away from home. Another story that comes to mind is Jacob and his 12 sons, where Jacob is very obvious as to which one of his sons is his favorite son, which is the youngest son. And the 11 older brothers just want to get rid of the youngest son because they're jealous. And so they leave him in a ditch to die. And not only that, Jesus' family, they're not perfect either. Mary and Joseph, they go on a road trip to Jerusalem, and on their way back home, they accidentally leave Jesus behind. And it takes them almost a full day to realize that he's not with them. So they go back to Jerusalem, and it takes them three more days to actually find Jesus. Like, what? If that story were to happen today, if that, if that were to happen today, that story would be all over the news, right? And these are just some of the examples of imperfect families that we find in our Bibles. Now, I'm not sharing these examples of imperfect families from the Bible so that it now gives you permission to try and get rid of your least favorite sibling or to, you know, disobey your parents or that your actions don't have consequences. That's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is that families aren't perfect because the people that make them up aren't perfect either. And I think Paul puts it into, into the, these right words in Romans chapter 3, verse 23. He says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. For all have sinned. All have sinned. We've all have made mistakes. We've all messed up. We've all made unwise decisions and unwise choices. We've all have fallen short of the glory of God. I'm not perfect, you're not perfect, your brother, your sister, they're definitely not perfect, and the adult that takes care of you and watches over you, guess what? They're not perfect either. Now some of you might be sitting there thinking, yeah, but Jean, like, I'm just in middle school. These adults that take care of me, watch over me, like, they've lived a lot longer of a life to know what's right and wrong. They should be a, a lot more wise. They should make the right decisions. They should be a lot more perfect or on the road to being perfect compared to me, right? But let me give you a little bit of perspective here. Just like you've been kind of going through this life, you, you know, you're going through this life for the very first time. The adults in your life are going through this life for the very first time too. And for them, it's their first time parenting you. It's their first time having to take care of you and watch over you. And they're figuring this out just like you're trying to figure this out. And just like you're going to be making mistakes along the way, they're going to be making mistakes along the way too. You're not perfect, and the adults that watch over you, take care of you, they're not perfect either. And you know what, and I think it's totally okay to, to hope and dream and wish for and pray for what you want in your family. I think that's totally fine. But if your whole goal is to try and have this absolutely picture-perfect family, you're going to be disappointed every time because the perfect family just doesn't exist because the people that make it up aren't perfect either. Because just like Paul says, we all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But there's still some really good news. Yeah, families can be messy and we make mistakes and there's lots of drama that can happen within our families, but in the middle of our imperfections, God's perfection is still at work in each and every single one of us. God is still at work at, in each and every single one of us, and it wasn't just this computer system that came up with your family. It wasn't a random scientist who put your family together. It was God that created your family, and he created it with a purpose and with a really amazing plan. He already knows that families aren't going to be perfect. He already knows that people aren't perfect. 
He knows the, the, the situation that your family is going through, the drama that you're facing, the good things and the bad things that are happening within your family. He already knows all about it. But God still wants to work through you and through your family. And no matter how different you feel like your family is or how imperfect you feel like your family is, that doesn't stop God's love for you and for your family. And no matter how different you feel like your family is or how imperfect your family is, it doesn't limit what God can do in you and through you. Because in the middle of our imperfection, God's perfection is still at work in each and every single one of us. I believe that's true for my family and I definitely believe that's true in yours too.